Welcome to the Be Rad Podcast. It's Brad Kearns. These are our sponsors. Mail Optimization Formula with Organs. Brad's Macadamia Masterpiece. Perfect Keto Ketone Supplements. Carol Fit Stationary Bike. Organifi Superfood. Viore Clothing. And Let's Get Check.com Home Testing. And please visit the BradKearns.com shop page for my personal selection of favorite products for health, fitness, and peak performance with great discount offers. And now here we go with the show, mofo. Disagreement, respectful debate, all these things are healthy and they're necessary to have an authentic relationship and a really meaningful uh, connection uh, interpersonally as well as from uh, host to audience. We constantly have to seek the further truth, uh, maintain an open mind, think critically and not be wedded to fixed and rigid beliefs, otherwise we're not growing anymore. The algorithms on social media and internet searches tend to favor things that will draw you in further and spend more time that are more salacious rather than a completely fair and independent analysis of what search terms might bring you. Hello, my friends. I am pleased to announce on this historic occasion that I'm changing the name of the Get Over Yourself podcast to the Be Rad podcast. Thank you for the comments and votes on social media. A few of you said that the word rad is totally dated, dude. But hey, maybe I'm uh, going to have a closer connection with the aging audience that knows what rad means. Be rad. Okay, why would I change the name of a podcast? Why not? If your name is a double entendre, you gotta, you gotta work with that. You gotta play that angle. And really, the B Rad name aligns with my, my brand, the tattoo on my hind quarters that is maintaining passion and competitive intensity throughout life, living that radical life. I just thought it would be a fun thing to do. And also, I think most regular listeners and myself have gotten over ourselves by now. Thanks to the many life-changing shows about healthy eating habits, how to live an active, fit lifestyle, pursue evolved relationship goals, minimize the damage caused by constant distraction and hyperconnectivity, living a lifestyle that's in alignment with our stated goals, and of course, trying not to take ourselves too seriously along the way. And honestly, I feel so lucky incredibly lucky to have the opportunity to engage one-on-one with these thought leaders of the planet. And I've made a sincere effort to maximize the gifts of being in this position by taking their insights to heart, making a devoted effort to apply them in everyday life, and of course, share everything with you in the most honest manner possible. And thinking about that, here I am, seven years down the road of hosting the Primal Blueprint podcast and two and a half years into this podcast. So I thought I'd communicate an updated mission statement and description of my vision. And it seems like the essence of modern media and niche programming that podcasting is, is to present your honest, authentic self and be vulnerable with the audience and so forth. Dax Shepard said as much when he was talking about the uh, sensational growth and success of his armchair expert podcast. And he says he just lays it all out there. He has no other choice but to be totally transparent and sharing all his innermost feelings and personality attributes and things that are uh, attractive to the audience because he's so real. And of course, he talks about his struggles and his past addictions and his insecurities and his frail to ego frailties. And uh, people, people uh, embrace that because mostly what we're seeing, especially someone like that, who's an actor, is you seeing him playing roles in movies. And now you get to kind of connect with the real person. And he does a really good job with his guests, too. And I like to think uh, I'm a pretty open guy. But uh, if you go look at that show titled Dave Rossi interviewing Brad Kearns, whew, that was a real eye opener because uh, we're going along and he's asking me about my background and things like that. And towards the end of the show, he said, so, Brad, what do the listeners still not know about you? <laughs> and I was like, uh, 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 I, I was kind of stumped. And we had to record an entire follow up show to get deeper into it. 
That show was titled Dave Rossi Consciousness Spirituality Finding Happiness from Within and What Brad's Hiding from the Listening Audience. And what I said at the time to Dave was that, uh, one thing is I'm, I'm trying to avoid completely spilling the beans about all my, uh, personal life matters, uh, with the audience. And secondly, I tend to be non-confrontational in life. And so I'm the same way during my podcast interviews and even during my breather shows such that I might be giving, uh, not delivering my entire unfiltered opinion at all times. And Dave made a great argument on, uh, on the show that this disagreement, respectful debate, all these things are healthy and they're necessary to have an authentic relationship and a really meaningful uh, connection uh, interpersonally as well as from uh, host to audience. And I really appreciate people in my life who have, you know, have been the real deal, spoken their unfiltered opinion, even when it wasn't uh, a popular or congenial. And I can reference people like Johnny G or my late training partner, Don Weaver, who, you know, had that brusque personality that put off a lot of people, but it was such a gift in life to have people uh, giving you the straight scoop, uh, especially when it came to things like uh, when I was trying to uh, decide whether or not to retire as a triathlete because I really wasn't feeling the magic anymore. I was struggling. I was getting my ass kicked in races and my support group and uh, the the world that I'd created around me to nurture and uh, encourage me uh, was doing the best they could, but I had that sinking feeling in my mind that, you know, I wasn't on my A game anymore and I was getting pushed out of the sport and it was probably time to move on. And certain people, uh, also Peter Coulson, one of my uh, longtime friends and sponsors in the sport, as well as Weaver, would just, you know, give me the straight scoop like, wow, you used to be really fast. Now you kind of suck. That was one of Peter Coulson's quotes. He'd call me up on the phone and go, Kearns, Kearns, you suck, mate. You should fucking retire. <laughs> and, um, you know, he's a wise guy. That was his Australian accent. But underneath that uh, kind of uh, sassy commentary, he was looking out for me. And it was really uh, well-meaning. And I, you know, I, I thank him forever because it was the truth. And no one else was really, uh, you know, in that position to to hit me that hard with with those insights <laughs> over and over in the case of Colson and Weaver the same when I was kind of off my A game in my personal life and struggling, he would just call it out and say, yeah, you got issues. Sounds like you got issues going on right now, man. And when you can have friends do that for you, I think it's, uh, it's really positive. And we have so much uh, chit chat and small talk and pleasantries these days that we need to cut through that sometimes. I think especially when you're listening to a podcast, when it's not a direct one-on-one -on -one encounter, uh, might as well put it out there and try to challenge you to live a better life and to, uh, you know, think critically. I mentioned my interactions with Dr. Paul Saladino frequently, where this carnivore rationale forced me to go back on my heels and rethink some of these fixed and rigid beliefs that I'd formed about healthy eating that all of us had formed, uh, because we constantly have to to seek the further truth, uh, maintain an open mind, think critically, and not be wedded to fixed and rigid beliefs. Otherwise, we're not growing anymore. So regarding not uh, sharing all my personal ups and downs. We're going to talk about that further, but I really do appreciate people who have come forward and, you know, expose their pain and suffering to the public to try to make the world a better place. I can't think of anyone uh, with a more powerful example than Caitlyn Jenner. Uh, she takes the prize for this amazing and phenomenal cultural impact that she's had uh, to bravely stand up and take her personal journey public. I just listened to a lengthy podcast on Rob Lowe's new podcast with Caitlyn Jenner and taking us back through the the years of Bruce Jenner, the amazing athlete, but, you know, never feeling quite whole as a person. And man, it was, you know, it, it's life changing for those people that are sharing that kind of struggle. Uh, but for all of us to listen and reflect and appreciate and, and maintain an open mind, really great stuff. Uh, personally, um, I'm not the next Caitlyn Jenner. I don't have some huge sob story or redemption story that's going to anchor my brand like so many people do. And to date, I'm not choosing to bring any 
uh, drama aspects of my family, personal life, children, whatever, into the programming. We do have the nice Mia Moore shows about healthy relationship dynamics where we're trying to turn on the microphone and talk about things of interest uh, as a real couple, uh, giving real unfiltered insights. Uh, so, you know, we'll see how that goes in the future. Uh, but in the interview shows, I definitely want to give the guest a forum to share their message without having to uh, manufacture controversy or do some of this uh, sensationalist type of engagements that we see on mainstream media for the sake of ratings. And I remember the classic example from the uh, shock sports jock Jim Rome popular radio host and then TV. And he had the Rams quarterback, Jim Everett on the show. And he called him Chris Everett, uh, the tennis player making reference to, uh, the people were accusing him of being a soft player and not tough. And he said, you, uh, you try that one more time. I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to attack you. And so he said it one more time. And then the table was upended and, uh, the larger Jim Everett knocked, uh, the the host to the ground and the chairs and everything was flying all over the studio and of course it had the intended effect of calling more attention to the show uh but come on i figure like the whole thing was a setup myself anyway so i want to give the guests an opportunity to share i don't need to manufacture any controversy or opposition however uh, I am second guessing my approach uh, now and then, and I think that I could be a little more challenging and less conciliatory when I experience a mild or strong difference of opinion and disagreement to what's uh, going on with the discussion. Um, one example is my show with my old time triathlon buddy and now popular plant based diet advocate Rip Esselstyn. And I brought him on the show as a deliberate attempt to bring someone in with a completely different angle than the typical ancestral diet lifestyle template that we've been talking about uh, for the most part here. And I definitely respect and appreciate Rip as a person and his wonderful efforts and his enthusiasm to inspire people to live healthy lifestyles. He started out as a firefighter and got all the guys in the in the uh, station to uh, ditch all this crappy uh, fried processed food. And he's cooking up these beautiful vegan meals and everybody's blood work gets better. And that launched him into the uh, stratosphere of becoming a, a national story and writing a string of best-selling books, uh, linking up with his father, Dr. Codwell Esselstyn at the Cleveland Clinic, who's done uh, respected work reversing heart disease through plant-based eating and other lifestyle interventions. So uh, good stuff all around. And then when Rip starts talking about how uh, meat and eggs are going to clog up your arteries and uh, drop you dead of a heart attack, um, I let it float out there without a, a big challenge. And the listener can, uh, you know, decide for themselves after hearing this and, and keeping an open mind. Uh, but there's definitely a place where uh, I might have a different take here. And I'm going to be uh, highly sensitive and reflective upon that in the future. Uh, another recent show I did with the extremely popular Dr. Josh Axe, one of the best selling authors and leading internet personalities in the health space. And um, he kind of uh, blended some creationism insights into his commentary when he was talking about the like supports like concept that we are so familiar with when it comes to consuming organ meats and nourishing and supporting the corresponding function of the organ in the body due to the very similarity of nutritional benefits and also the uh, the cofactors, uh, molecular biodirectors, the signaling that is caused by consuming these foods uh, that it has on your own internal organs. But Dr. X took it all the way into the plant kingdom saying that, hey, ginger resembles a stomach and celery stalks look like bones. And a tomato has four chambers just like a heart. So eating a tomato will help your heart function. And, <laughs> you know, this one is pretty far out there. I did challenge him. I said, do you have any science to, to back this up? And he says, well, if you don't believe in creationism, uh, you're not going to like my answers. So that's a pretty bulletproof protection mechanism. Not much more to say about that. My mind was thinking how cotton candy resembles a lung. And so maybe that could help with lung function to grab a few of those. Uh, but anyway, um, I don't know if that would have uh, enhanced the quality of the show. <sighs> However, 
uh, back to the rip example where I just let him uh, present his case and uh, let it float out there. Uh, when I made a uh, brief reference to uh, rip and Dr. Codwell's work during the Paul Saladino show, he did not hesitate to aggressively refute the Esselstyn's body of life's work, calling their science uh, shoddy and manipulated. And he just didn't have uh, any problem uh, shooting straight and presenting his opinion. And this is not cavalier uh, naysaying for the sake of controversy and shock value. This is very well thought out and, uh, you know, d investigating the, the science and the research to form an informed opinion. So you got to love it. You got to appreciate it for someone standing up for their very well thought out and researched beliefs and not backing down and not even being polite about it. Why not? Uh, boy, it's competitive out there and we got to fight for uh, what's right and what we believe in. Same with my show with Rob Wolf. It was so inspiring because he was calling bullshit left and right. And after all, his community is called the healthy rebellion. And it really is healthy to speak your truth and seek the truth at all times. And he talked about how the now disgraced founder of CrossFit, Greg Glassman, not only trashed his business with uh, bad behavior and inappropriate social commentary, but he prescribed a stupid workout that caused Rob Wolf to have a severe back injury that hurt him for many years. He also called out the very popular Blue Zones best-selling book and healthy lifestyle movement as pretty much of a hoax, uh, buoyed on areas that have a known... Uh, inadequacy in birth record keeping and a lot of pension fraud. In other words, some of these people are pretending to be their fathers <laughs> for the sake of collecting pensions. And this idea of super centenarianism in these pockets around the globe is strongly correlated. And of course, there's research and you can read a lot of good articles to back this up. It's strongly correlated with these same areas having poor record keeping. <laughs> oh, man. And on from there, he was talking about how his documentary film, Sacred Cow, has been subject to... Uh, uh, political and other forces that are trying to suppress the distribution of it, sort of a uh, unfair uh, or distorted debate where you're not able to even go up head up against a uh, documentary film like The Game Changers advocating for plant-based lifestyle because they can't even get distributed on Netflix because people are shutting it down. The vegan movement is very powerful and politically connected. And hey, Rob might as well say these things and he's experienced it. So uh, let's take a listen and realize that, oh my gosh, we know from uh, the work of Tristan Harris, the center of Center for Humane Technology, how the algorithms on social media uh, and internet searches uh, tend to favor things that will draw you in further and spend more time that are more salacious rather than a completely fair and uh, independent uh, analysis of what uh, search terms might bring you uh, without that sort of uh, input from human manipulation. Uh, in the interest of, you know, bringing more eyeballs to the screen and spending more time engaged with the site because that's how these companies make more money. Ah, <sighs> yeah, we got to think for ourselves, people. We got to think on our feet, think critically. And so right now I'm going to proclaim with this show that I aspire to grow in this area overall and become more transparent, more honest, and more authentic as much as I possibly can. <gasps> Ooh, but wait, this word authentic seems to be overused. This insight occurred to me when I heard a great commentary from Seth Godin, my previous podcast guest, in his new book titled The Practice. And he makes a great point there that this popular notion of being authentic is basically inaccurate and impossible. There's nothing about hosting a podcast, being interviewed on a podcast, or doing anything in public that's actually authentic. And Godin says authentic is having that temper tantrum inside your car when you get a parking ticket, right? That's when your your true self comes out. Or I guess a lot of people, when they walk through the door after a hectic, stressful day, and then they, you know, let their family see the real person and the real uh, emotional disturbance that they were uh, guarding and regulating uh, throughout the day in the workplace. So when we're playing these roles in society, in the workplace, interacting with public, d delivering a, uh, a, a podcast episode or being interviewed, we're making what Seth Godin calls, quote, calculated efforts to get a certain reaction or result. 
end quote. So I'm going to try to rephrase this goal from being authentic to making a calculated effort to deliver the best possible message I can that will have the greatest impact on you and delivering the show with this clear intention and purpose at all times. All right. A little bit of a nuanced difference there. And I want to be especially honest about my own personal progress with diet health fitness lifestyle goals instead of what we're seeing basically is the Instagram highlight show where you see the best of the best. And that's fine. We don't need to present um, your worst day. But when we dress it up a little too much and tiptoe over that boundary where we're no longer seeing uh, the true picture or the big picture, I think that can get kind of stupid. We can all agree uh, on that. So as I'm trying to improve my ability to deliver the best possible message that has the greatest impact. Let me go through this, uh, what the healing circles call the fearless moral inventory, areas where I have needs to improve or how specifically I can do this. The number one would be uh, too much Mr. Nice Guy, so I can progress from there to being more of a straight shooter and a challenger when necessary. Second, I think I can tone down what's often unbridled enthusiasm. So when I'm exposed to an exciting new idea like the carnivore diet or the X3 bar workout training device or the male optimization formula with organs, I think this stuff is the greatest thing of all time and it's so amazing and I'm so excited about it. And I suppose I can inject more skepticism and patience into my decision making and approval or recommendation of things. Uh, but for the most part, I kind of enjoy uh, getting excited about new things and uh, putting them to the test. And I'm certainly feel like I'm there with all the things that I recommend. For example, my advertising partners, I'm going to go thumbs down on something that I think is stupid. Uh, I was just offered to promote uh, this very popular, or at least you hear a lot of podcast advertising uh, for this cereal product that's uh, supposedly uh, containing uh, healthy ingredients, but it tastes like your favorite uh, sugary cereal from your childhood. And I looked at the ingredients on the box and I was shocked because I hear these commercials going on all over the place and people touting this stuff is like wonderful. And it's uh, pretty objectionable, like everything in there is highly processed. Uh, meanwhile, I found at a uh, big box store near me and near you, uh, Costco carrying this grain-free granola, which uh, has some pretty nice stuff in there. And I'll throw that on my yogurt once in a while when I'm looking for some extra carbs. It's, you know, it has some grains in there. I think oats are in there, but it's got uh, coconut oil, coconuts, a variety of nuts. And boy, without the fanfare of this ridiculous ad campaign for a highly processed product, Yeah, you'll never catch me uh, doing something or promoting something that I don't actually use. So I'm getting there and just a little more patience, I think. But I still love all the things that I mentioned, uh, especially the mofo. It really does work and it's nourishing at the cellular level. It's hard to argue with the nutrient density of something like a freeze dried animal organ supplement. So I have no problem uh, aggressively promoting things that I really believe in uh, for better or for worse. If you're turned off by that, too bad. I'm still going to talk about it because I want to change lives and share the magic and share the things that really work. So let's look at number three on the list would be uh, to walk my talk. Of course, Uh, it's very hard to respect someone who's creating content or dispensing health advice who's not aligned in real life. Uh, So looking further at this, I talk a lot about the dangers, the drawbacks of hyperconnectivity and constant digital distraction, how it ruins productivity, it ruins our social connections, and I'm trying to be as vigilant as possible about this in my own personal life, but I still admit that I'm fighting the battle, man, and it's a tough and sometimes losing battle. Uh, I'm a highly sensitive, I feel like I'm highly sensitive to uh, potential for distraction. Clicking over to the uh, high jump videos on YouTube instead of working on my book. So it's still a work in progress. Um, I feel like putting these uh, formulas and patterns into places really help. So I'm so excited to tout my morning 
uh, flexibility, mobility, core and leg strengthening routine. I have a new video up on YouTube uh, to replace the one from three years ago. So my routine has progressed to be something that's really uh, ambitious and quite difficult that I execute every single morning, first thing, no matter what. So instead of being on technology, I have this rule and this pattern in place in my daily life, just as you might uh, reference for brushing your teeth before you go to bed or uh, whatever else is just locked into place where you don't have to think about it. You don't have to apply any uh, willpower or creative energy. You just do it. And the more those things that we can put into place in daily life today. I also have a little uh, buzzer that goes off at 9.45 p.m. on my phone. And it says something like um, a bedtime alert. So I found it on my iPhone. And I'm not saying that uh, when that thing goes off, I jump right into bed in the next 12 minutes, uh, but it's a really nice reminder. And it puts me in a frame of mind when that ding goes off, that this is a, uh, a different phase of the 24 hour cycle where it's time to start thinking about getting into bed and turning the lights off and going to sleep. So that's been, uh, those are a couple examples that have been really helpful. And I think we can all reference uh, ideas along these lines, but putting them into place and maintaining that firm and sincere commitment to it, to not get pulled away from the things that mean the most to you. That is a really big deal. I'm trying my hardest. I'm going to continue to talk about it and emphasize it. And so that's on the list of walking my talk. Uh, number two, walking my talk about diet, obviously, since I'm cranking out books and digital courses and podcast episodes on this subject. Uh, I don't think you're going to catch me uh, with a, a, a mobile camera chowing down a Butterfinger uh, in the airport terminal ever. Okay. But I do have some continued, uh, uh, issues that I'm really trying hard to work on. Uh, my food choices are excellent, of course. And uh, when I talk about my imperfections and indulgences, like the Fatty Popcorn Boy saga, that's the title of one of my podcast episodes. It's right out there. I'm not uh, ashamed to discuss it. I think it's important. However, uh, the one thing I'm really noticing uh, behind the stage, backstage, is that I still have a propensity to eat too quickly, uh, eat in a distract environment, distracted environment, or eat more than I need to feel satisfied. So getting more mindful and calm and relaxed and eating meals in a celebratory environment rather than eating food uh, for caloric energy. And I feel like this uh, frailty is dating back to my days as a triathlete and training all day and having to make a concerted effort to throw down more food than I needed so that I could recover and perform the many hours of training that awaited me the next day. So eating too fast, shoveling food down my throat, uh, you know, picking up the plate off the table and taking two more spoonfuls from Mia Moore's plate before I wash it off just because there's food sitting there and those kind of things that are not really considered uh, mindful or intentional eating. So tons of room for improvement there. And I'm going to guess that many listeners who have their food choices dialed in can explore other areas of diet optimization relating to meal times and relating to uh, getting more in alignment with your hunger and satiety signaling. Uh, so there you go. And then finally, uh, when it comes to fitness, um, I'm so excited and talking so much about what I see as this uh, wonderful revolution in the fitness world uh, to promote a kinder, gentler approach to fitness rather than the no pain, no gain, struggling and suffering mentality that we've been programmed with for so many years and decades and all the uh, the group fitness activities, the programming, the people who are making uh, money dispensing fitness advice and equipment have been pushing these ideals for so long that you have to go torture yourself in order to get in shape and, you know, getting programming aligned with this where you're going into the, the, the room for the spinning class and the music's pumping and the instructors screaming at you to climb one more hill at, at the end of the Tour de France. And we're going to do one more sprint to the finish and everyone's going to feel great and high five after the workout. But getting into patterns like this where the workouts are overly stressful is setting us up for demise, attrition, discouragement, dissatisfaction with our fitness endeavors. And so it's time to uh, to shake that up 
and allow all of us to pursue a kinder, gentler approach to fitness where we leave something in the tank at every single workout. We're not puking on the side of the track in the name of getting fitter or going faster. So great stuff there, especially how micro workouts uh, fit into the picture there, because I think this is a wonderful concept uh, to realize that a workout doesn't have to be this huge formal ordeal where you get in your car and drive over to the gym and uh, get scanned with your little tag and get a towel and then go into class and it lasts for a certain period of time and it's a big scheduling item on your calendar. Instead, we realize that anytime, any place, even in your cubicle, you can drop for a set of 20 deep squats and have these uh, little things accumulate to make a big impact on your overall fitness. Just these little bursts of explosive activity or any form of movement to break up periods of stillness in your busy day. So that's wonderful. We don't have to overdo it. We can totally reject this uh, ethos of chronic cardio, uh, chronic CrossFit, things that put you into uh, distress uh, immune suppression, breakdown, burnout, illness, and injury. However, the reason it's on the list is because I'm still guilty of this overly enthusiastic approach to uh, especially the challenging workouts, the ones where you're pushing peak performance. And I have the uh, ability, the propensity to overdo it and drift into overtraining patterns again. Uh, you know, I'm out there on the track, time for my track workout, my jumping workout, my, my sprinting workout, and I have so much fun and I'm so excited and I have no problem pushing myself and, you know, exploring my, my boundaries and what I can do on a certain day that I kind of get carried away and have a tendency to overdo it. Uh, this past summer, I took my son out to the track and he's a, super strong 22 year old uh, college level athlete and i invited him to join me for my sequence of jumping drills and sprints and we went through the uh, eight or ten sets of little brief hopping and bounding and some short sprints and then i went over and practiced some high jump approaches at the end and we're walking back to the car and he's like dad that workout was hard for me. You shouldn't be doing all that at 55 years old. And I'm like, really? It was hard for you because I don't really work out with people that often. Uh, but coming from him, I was like, oh my gosh, I, I had no idea. I didn't realize that. And sure enough, uh, you know, I was sore and hobbled the next day because it, it really is a pretty tough session. And I started to uh, do the workout too frequently and injured my knee. And here I am four months later, still dealing with this nagging minor knee injury that's preventing me from doing my typical sprinting and jumping workout. So missing four months of proper workout, gee, it would have been probably smarter and more uh, conducive to my fitness progress to tone everything down a couple notches from the full energy and enthusiasm that I put out to these workouts that can easily drift over into uh, past the red line and into the breakdown, burnout, illness, and injury category. So all of us, uh, just toning that down. I'll continue to emphasize that point and do a better job in my own personal life of trying to tone things down. I love the insight that's been communicated by so many people these days that you don't really want to get sore after your workouts. If you generate muscle soreness, that's indicative of muscle damage and the protein synthesis, the repair and recovery process afterward is going toward fixing to repairing those damaged muscle fibers rather than uh, muscle growth and improvement of fitness, right? You have to put all your energy toward repair instead of devoting it to improvement and progress as if you did a workout that was slightly less stressful and not, you know, breaking you down so far. And then, of course, you can be more consistent because you're not missing, for example, four months with a, a minor knee injury. That's funny. I was hiking with my my old friend and former high school uh, running teammate, Dr. Steven, and I was asking him about the, the knee issue. It's getting so annoying here, uh, this connective tissue injury. And I said, uh, you know, how long would something like this take uh, to heal typically? And he said, well, if you're 20, a couple weeks. If you're 55, several months. <laughs> I'm like, come on, man, that's not fair. Okay, so uh, being more patient, kinder, gentler approach to fitness, walking my talk in that area. <sighs> Thank you for listening to the Be Rad Podcast kickoff episode. What do you think? Send me some comments. 
Oh my goodness, we're going to have to pop up a new email address, aren't we? Okay, send the comments to podcast at bradventures.com. Uh, you can use the old email address too, but let's, let's get fresh and new here. Podcast at bradventures.com. Love your feedback, suggestions, and hopefully we are now all clear and focused and full speed ahead. Thank you so much for helping me spread the word about the show and bring in more listeners. If you like it, please, uh, leave a review. It helps so much. And if you have one of the alternative podcast apps, like my favorite one is called Overcast. It really helps sort the shows nicely. And it has a little feature where you can push a button and record a soundbite from wherever that point that you're listening in uh, and, and lengthen or shorten the soundbite appropriately. And it'll make a sound file on the spot, which you can text over to a friend like, hey, listen to this guy blabbing for a minute and see what you think and go listen to the full show. So yeah, I'm going to recommend Overcast for that. I don't know if the other apps can do that, uh, but I really appreciate your efforts to to share and acquaint other people. And thank you so much for listening. Brad Kearns, be rad. Thank you for listening to the show. I love sharing the experience with you and greatly appreciate your support. Please email podcast at bradventures.com with feedback, suggestions, and questions for the Q&A shows. Subscribe to our email list at bradkearns.com for a weekly blast about the published episodes and a wonderful bi-monthly newsletter edition with informative articles and practical tips for all aspects of healthy living. You can also download several awesome free ebooks when you subscribe to the email list. And if you could go to the trouble to leave a five or five star review with Apple Podcasts or wherever else you listen to the shows, that would be super incredibly awesome. It helps raise the profile of the BRAD podcast and attract new listeners. And did you know that you can share a show with a friend or loved one by just hitting a few buttons in your player and firing off a text message? My awesome podcast player called Overcast allows you to actually record a soundbite excerpt from the episode you're listening to and fire it off with a quick text message. Thank you so much for spreading the word. And remember, be rad.